Surprise pop quiz time. Whose pants are literally on fire? You got it. The devil. And why exactly are his britches burning? Because he's a liar, liar. You sit on a throne of lies. Liar. He's a liar. He's lying. I am lying. Quiz question number two. Who was the first liar? Bingo, the devil. Question three, who is the father of lies? We get it. It's the devil. Right. And I get it. Congratulations. Question number four, how does the devil cause people to sin? This guy's a liar. Are we seeing a pattern here? Question number five. Get ready for this. How is the devil like Panera? That's right. This is a lame sermon illustration. The devil is like Panera because when you visit Panera, the goodies on the shelf, mm, they look so good. You order your salad, you eat it, you finish it, and then you say, I'm still hungry. I'm hungry, mother. I really am. Why does sin never satisfied? Because sin is a liar with a voracious appetite. With that in mind, please pass your papers to the front of the class and let's tackle seven lies about God. Hey, that sounds like a book from Erwin Lutzer because, well, basically it is. Here we go. God doesn't exist. There is no God. Sorry, the person who utters this absolute inanity has an agenda because the single most intuitive conclusion that we can draw is if you have a creation, you have a creator. If you have morals, you have a moral law giver. Why do they deny what is obvious? Because their agenda is to sin, suppress the knowledge God exists, and you are off to the sin races. Now, as a side note, if you've wondered, how is it that people can deny pink and blue, boy and girl, two genders? It's easy. Once you've denied the existence of God, which is even more obvious than genders, well, then you can deny anything. Lie number six. All paths, all journeys lead to the same God. Okay, my pluralistic friend, which happens to be basically the majority of Americans these days. Here's a question if you're a pluralist. If Jesus Christ really is God in the flesh, and if Jesus lived a perfect life of morality, died a brutal death that sinners like me, like you, could be reconciled to God, if Jesus went to that much effort and even stated that he is the exclusive way, the exclusive truth, the exclusive one. If pluralism is true, then Jesus would have added, I was just kidding. Come on. Get there any way you want to. I don't care what you believe in. He would not go through such a costly endeavor if he were not the only way. Why would he do all of that and then let us worship a piece of wood. When you think about what Jesus said, what he did, it's clear pluralism. It just doesn't even make sense. Lie number five. God does not get involved with human affairs. The question answered at a certain point, not very long ago in our history, but by the deists, people like Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Paine, and many others who said that the order of the universe seemed to suggest that it couldn't just have been random, um, that the, the may have been a designer, but the, the designer didn't take any part in human affairs. So this is classic deistic thinking. God, he's so transcended, so distant, so different. God is not involved at all with our life and our world. He just set the place spinning and went and took a nap or went to a party. If that's true, then life has no meaning. And the planet and eternity they're up for grabs. The good thing is we know that God is invested and involved with human affairs because he's revealed himself to us in the person of Jesus Christ. Lie number four. The God of the Old Testament is arguably the most unpleasant character in all fiction. But the God of the New Testament, he's pretty sweet, loving, and forgiving. <laughs> okay, ask Adonis and Sapphira. 
Ask the unbelievers in the book of Revelation. Ask Jesus who said, I'm going to tell a lot of people, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, because God is immutable. His character doesn't change between testaments. He's righteously angry and perfectly loving and forgiving in both the Old and New Testaments. Lie number three, God he doesn't know our decisions before we make them. Open theists simply believe that when God created the world, he created it with possibilities, unresolved possibilities. And to the degree that the world consists of unresolved possibilities, then the fact that God knows is that uh, it may go this way or that way. So it's really just the belief that possibilities are real. God created a world in which the future is to some degree open, open to possibilities. That is a horrifying lie. According to the Bible, he absolutely does. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows the thoughts and intentions of every human heart. If God doesn't know our thoughts, then he's not omniscient. But wait, it gets even worse, my open theistic friend. I'm looking at you, Greg Boyd. Every decision we make was not only known, it was preordained by God. So just put that in your open theistic pipe and smoke it. Lie number two, oh, the fall, it ruined God's plan. This is plan B. Sorry, there are no plan Bs in God's economy. Well-intentioned Christians, throw this out because it kind of gets God off the hook for all of the effects of the fall. But Acts 2, Acts 4, make it plain. The fall was God's prearranged plan from the beginning so he could send his son so that his glory could be fully known. One last problem. If we can thwart God's plan, then we're more powerful than God. And last time I checked, we're not. And that brings us to lie number one. Although they are all whoppers, when obeying God, we're choosing his pleasures over our own what? Here's the reality. When you know Jesus Christ, what pleases him will gradually come to please us. If our pleasures aren't in alignment with his, then our pleasures are, yeah, yeah, what's the word I'm looking for? Sin. Because God's ways are the best ways. You can be certain if you choose to obey God and not your own desires, you will be doing the most pleasurable thing that you can do. Furthermore, when God commands us to get our pleasures in alignment with his, it is the kindest gift that he can give. Think of it like this. You're hungry. I approached you and said, you can have this prime rib or you can have this plate of what I picked off off of the front lawn after my dog was out there repeatedly. What? Which would be kinder? And the answer, of course, is not this. The prime rib. God's way is the prime rib. Our ways are like, well, what dogs create on your front lawn. God is not being cruel by conforming us into his image. It is the kindest thing that he can do. There you have it. Seven. Notice we didn't choose six. Seven lies of the devil. So let's conclude with two final quiz questions. These are bonus points. Number one, how do you keep yourself from falling for one of the deceivers? Countless lies. It's actually quite simple. Know the truth. And you only find that in the person of Jesus revealed in his inspired book called the Bible. Don't want to be taken captive with false ideologies. You got to read your Bible and Finally, and perhaps most mind-blowingly, where did truth come from? And the answer is, it didn't. Truth always existed. It wasn't created. It wasn't discovered. Instead, God is the truth. That's why Jesus said, I am the truth. It actually proceeds from him because he is the standard of truth. A statement of observation, it can contain truth, but only God is truth. And truth is only codified in the Bible. So here's the truth. God is good, God is able, and God is faithful. How do I know that's true? Because those are the three most common descriptors of God in the Bible. And God, unlike the devil, never lies. 
I used to think the Bible was just a bunch of confusing names. Go fetch Nebuchadnezzar. Then my doctor recommended the wretched store. I found resources to help me understand my Bible. Come here. Come here, girl. Thank you.